I'm Katherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society, and the uh, Historical Society has been so interested during this year of pandemic to uh, capture the stories of what's going on in Fitchburg during this uh, very significant time and historic time. Um, and so this afternoon, we are so delighted to have um, Mayor uh, Aaron Richardson with us uh, to really talk about what's happening in Fitchburg government in terms of this COVID um, period of time and how that, how that has uh, impacted uh, our government in Fitchburg. So um, Aaron, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. It's really such a pleasure to, uh, to have you here. Um, first question I wanted to ask is um, if we can just take you back to way back last year in March of uh, 2020, and um, when we began to have our lockdown during the, um, uh, during the uh, COVID um, virus, uh, what changes did you need to um, make in how you conducted the business of your office as mayor of Fitchburg? Yeah, I remember back in March, you had heard about this thing coming and it had been in China and is spreading. And when it finally got here, I remember just the uncertainty and not really knowing how the impacts were going to be, but really concerned about people and how it's going to impact people, both residents and employees. And so that was really our primary concern right away. And we certainly wanted to make sure that we did everything possible to ensure the safety of everyone. And so we really looked at it, really thought about, okay, what can we do? What's the most important thing? Right away, we kind of shut everything down for about a month or so and did everything we could to really stop that and try to learn more. There's so much uncertainty. That's what I remember. And there's no kind of playbook of how you're supposed to do this. And what are the next steps? It seemed like daily things would change. And so that's what I really remember a lot. And it was really a case of how do we keep staff and residents safe? And how can we change what we're doing to make sure that it happens while still keeping the city running? We can't just stop plowing roads and picking up trash and doing all these types of things and so how can we adjust on the fly and do it as soon as possible? Mm -hmm. What were some of the very uh, concrete measures that you took then uh, to ensure that safety? Do you remember uh, social distancing, um, staying home, using, using more uh, technology? What, what specifically were you doing at that time? Yeah, we definitely closed down City Hall to just people being able to walk in. We were still available for appointments, but we didn't want anyone from the public to just be coming in whenever they wanted to, to again, just limit the exposure. That was a big thing. And distancing was a big thing. Masks really weren't right away. Very quickly it was, but masks weren't a thing that were required right away. That was more of June, July when that became a lot bigger deal. So it was really just trying to figure that out one of the things that was a big challenge was how are we going to do an election in April? An election's a month away and the people who work the elections are generally older and at risk. That's a lot of people coming into those polling stations as well. So we quickly had our public works department came up with a really neat kind of plexiglass divider to try and help protect our workers we started recruiting more workers right away because there's a lot of people who understandably were concerned about working. And so they decided they didn't want to do that. So we had to find some more workers so we could keep our polling places open. I believe that we are the only municipality in the area that did not reduce the amount of polling places, except for those that have like one polling place. But I believe we're the only municipality, certainly in every only city and village that still kept our same four polling places open during the entire election, the entire year, actually, not just April, but throughout the entire year. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive that you were able to do that and pull that together in such a short period of time uh, and still have people be able to go to their, their home, home polling places that they were used to. 
Um, wondering too, what, uh, what were some of the challenges faced by both the staff and maybe the various departments of the city uh, during this almost year now of pandemic? If you look at the, you know, kind of the totality of what you've lived through during this time, um, what would you say about, uh, you know, staff and departments, what they have had to do? The biggest challenge is just being able to do business without meeting people face to face. And construction still happened. We had huge amounts of houses being built. We had some businesses that continued some projects that they had going on. And so you really look at all the departments were trying to figure out how do they do their services online and how can staff work from home? And what do we have for laptops and materials and things like that? And so we relied on Zoom. Zoom was unknown to most people before March, April. And so we quickly worked on that. You had every department I can go through and talk about some of the things that helped us out with. Fact TV jumped on the Zoom thing and how to have accessibility for the public and for our council members during meetings and for staff during, and, and residents during all meetings. You know, even people like our building inspection, they still have to go and inspect those buildings. You can't stop that. And you don't want to stop those houses and businesses from building. And so all those changed, even something like the library, they started doing curbside pickup only. So people couldn't go and browse, but they could call and reserve those materials. So every single department had impacts. And, you know, the senior center, that's another one where they unfortunately had to close, but they tried to do things to at least keep engaged with their people who come in there because that's such a such a huge piece of the life of so many of our elderly citizens. Did you have enough uh, material uh, protective equipment, for instance, for uh, your emergency folks like the uh, police department, the fire department? Was that ever uh, problematic for you? We were concerned early on, but we got a lot of donations. We had people like uh, Yahara Bay Distillery start creating hand sanitizer and donated a bunch of hand sanitizer to our police, our fire, our EMS, and our poll workers actually, and all staff. But for, you know, especially the emergency services. Um, we definitely had that concern. We were able to continue getting donations and finding ways to to purchase where it was never a problem, but it was always a concern because you didn't know, and especially March, April, May, when it's first really hit and everyone is trying to get that PPE, the masks, the hand sanitizer, the gowns, the you know, all that stuff, it was very difficult to find. And so we, every chance we got, picked that stuff up. Mm -hmm. We never got to the point where it was a problem. And now I think the, different uh, production facilities have been able to catch up and really kind of get ahead of that demand, but it was definitely a concern. Yeah, yeah, we remember those early months and how difficult it was knowing, knowing what the next days would bring. Um, so as mayor, of course, you have a unique perspective on the city of Fitchburg and its residents. Um, in your conversations with city residents, uh, what do you hear about how citizens are dealing with the issues created by the pandemic? How are people doing? Yeah, some are doing better than others. I think a lot of people took the opportunity to get outside and, you know, try to be more active, go to uh, the parks that we have around Fitchburg. We have such phenomenal paths and parks. And so I think a lot more people were using those. That was a big piece of it. A lot more people, I think, were trying to reach out with phone calls and just emails to people that they know. It was a lot more work and a lot more effort. So, you know, everyone kind of has different strategies. Some people did a lot more reading. Some people did a lot more exercising. Some people didn't do any exercising and it went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's a challenge. And I think the, the mental challenge has been the hardest thing on everyone. I mean, a lot of people are like me where they just love to interact with people and see people and hug people. And 
in your small circle, you can do that, but you can't, you're not, you shouldn't be doing that with other people. And that was really hard. Even shaking hands. I feel so rude when I meet people and I can't shake their hand. <laughs> it's such a natural uh, gesture for us to make. And especially you in your very public position, meeting, meeting many people every day. And, and now those, those kind of physical contacts are gone are gone to a large extent. So, and uh, well, we appreciate knowing, you know, kind of what you've been hearing from people and how they how they've been managing this. Mm -hmm. um, can just to switch subjects, um, I'm wondering, uh, can you tell us something about the budget for the city of Fitchburg and the impact that COVID maybe has had on that? Mm -hmm. Sure. I think in a couple of ways, it's been impacted a lot. One was just the extra expense with having all the PPE and trying to keep people safe, buying more laptops so people can work from home. But I think the department that really got hit the hardest for us is our recreation department. We couldn't do recreation programs. And so they couldn't do those programs. They couldn't uh, have that income. And so that's the one that really, I think, got hit the hardest because what they do is they get people together and they provide opportunities for people to do fun things and you just couldn't do that and so that's really the one that probably got hit the hardest uh, we were able to you know repurpose those staff to do a bunch of other projects and maintenance projects in our parks and around the uh, city but that was probably the biggest one where you know we're still kind of dealing with that because even now in january of 2021 we still can't right now but we're talking about okay you know in april may maybe we can start doing some small group things you know once you get to may can you do some outdoor activities whether it's you know soccer or even fitness class or a dance class things like that can you do them outside where it's a little bit safer and you know so we're looking at those things right now to try and do some of those that are very popular uh, for our residents mm -hmm. Did, uh, did any staff need to be laid off then because of COVID and uh, differences in the kinds of activities or, or services that could be offered? We were, unable, we were able to avoid any kind of layoffs, furloughs, anything like that. There was a little bit of a concern you know, this year as COVID has continued to be an issue with our rec department because they're not getting that revenue, but we are uh, now... Uh, making a couple changes to our budget so that we can keep those people on staff and don't need to temporarily lay them off. It would never be, have been a permanent thing, but a temporary layoff. We've avoided that because we've rearranged some other things in our budget. So I'm really happy to be able to, to do that and to just ensure at least that piece of our, our employees' lives is taken care of and they don't have to worry about that. Good, good. Um, so well, we're all so aware of the many difficulties that COVID has caused in our lives, um, but have there been any silver linings for the city of Fitchburg uh, in this year of pandemic? Absolutely. Any positive things that have come out of it? I think so. I think when you look at our problem solving, how we've been able to continue doing 99% of the things that we've done in the past, to me, that's what's just been so heartwarming and you see how much our employees really care and want to do what's best for our residents and so they are going above and beyond they so many of them are working from home now and they're doing everything they can to keep other people safe and so to me that's really a big silver lining just i knew this i knew these are all things that i knew already but it just verifies and really kind of tells me Yep, that, that's what you thought. People care a lot. They want to do what's best for everyone. And uh, they'll do, they'll go above and beyond. And every department in our city, I can go through every single one and talk about the things that they've done to go above and beyond. You know, even the one, the areas that maybe aren't as sexy or popular like IT, them, them just getting laptops to staff and f helping figure out the technology piece and the software piece so that people can continue doing their job, even if they have to work from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, how great to have that verified for you, what you already knew about, about your very uh, competent staff and how they have reached deeper and, uh, and, and extended themselves more to make, to make the city of Fitchburg continue to function so well. Well, to put a personal aspect on this, Mayor, um, each of us have, of course, our own stories during this pandemic of our journey through these long months with COVID. Um, what's it been like for you personally to live through this time of COVID? What's what's your story? <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I will say it, it's not fun. <laughs> Anyone seeing this in the future that might not remember, it's not fun. I would rather never have done this. For me, a few things that I've tried to do is stay active, get even more running and biking than normal. I wasn't able to do things like play softball, which is something I really like a lot, but uh, I had to give that up this year. And for me, I think, you know, we, I do have a small group that, you know, again, is safe when we do anything. Um, it's been a little harder now that it's cold out because we were to do things outside, but you know, or just connecting with certain people. And, you know, I took the opportunity to reach out to people who I haven't talked to in a while, especially when this first started and reconnecting with them. Uh, for me though, it, it's a challenge because I'm a very outgoing person who likes hanging out with other people and you can't do that. And, you know, I, I wanna give hugs. I wanna do those things. Uh, right now I am kind of the tech person at Brooklyn Elementary School. And I've worked in a couple of roles here in the Oregon School District previously. And it's so hard to not give these kids hugs. You know, yeah. they, they, you know, kindergartners, first graders, second graders, they're so adorable and they're so sweet. And you just want to give them a hug. And sometimes they really need a hug or sometimes they run up to you and give you hugs and it's the best feeling in the world. And you just can't do that. And that's just, that's just so hard. It's just so hard for you when you're used to that, you know how much sometimes the kids need it and sometimes you need it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well said, well said. Well, as we move ahead into 2021 and beyond, uh, what impact do you think the pandemic will leave us with in how government functions and maybe the lessons we've learned from going through this time? Mm -hmm. I think the, probably the biggest impact is just more flexibility and especially work schedules. I think there's going to be a lot of people who work from home once or twice a week instead of having to be at the office all the time. I think that's a big impact. I think that it's hard to know some of the other impacts, but I think just the appreciation too of what we have and so that's a big thing for me. I think that you know another impact, not necessarily government related, but one thing that we haven't been able to do is events. Those are the those are the fun things. You know, you get to go to ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings and events like the Burby Derby. I, I wore the shirt, you know, just for this. <laughs> you know, there's such a huge piece of the community, and we haven't been able to do those certainly anywhere close to what they've been in the past. And you miss that, and you miss those opportunities. And so I think there's just gonna be a lot more appreciation for that. And also I just think going forward, um, just I think it's moved us ahead in technology a, a long ways. And so when you have people who can now participate through uh, Zoom for even stuff like government meetings, I think those things in some way or the other are still gonna be the case. And so that'll be something going forward, I think is great. It just makes things like our government more accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then um, maybe before we close, since you're a leader in the Fitchburg community, um, are there any final words of advice or encouragement you'd like to express to the residents of Fitchburg in regard to our epidemic? I would say that, you know, we're almost through it. The hardest parts are, are, I think, about done right now. There is a lot of hope. And, you know, just thank you for all your hard work and dedication and continue to make this just a wonderful community to live in. And we'll, we'll get there. We're going to be back to normal soon. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Don't forget there's other people out there in your same boat. And we're all in this together. 
don't ever hesitate to reach out and get help if you need it. But we're close and, you know, go outside, utilize the wonderful assets we have here in the community with the paths and the trails and the open spaces. That's why it's there. So you can get outside and you can really connect with nature and do those types of things. So, you know, we'll get there and let us know if there's anything that we can help with. Thank you so much, Mayor. We really, um, we really appreciate finding out, first of all, kind of what's been going on, you know, with this, with the government and, uh, and how, how that's, how that's impacted you through this period of time and, and uh, appreciate your insights in that regard. And then thank you for those wonderful words of encouragement. I think we all need to hold each other up and look forward to the times when we do get to have those hugs again and those personal interactions. And as you said, how much we've missed them and how much we're looking forward to them again. Well, I'd like to just let uh, people know uh, again about our physical location as Fitchburg Historical Society, which is at the Fitchburg Library, uh, which is closed at, at this time, but we can also be accessed very easily um, on our website, which is uh, fitchburghistory.org. So please feel free to, uh, to check in with us. We're always putting fresh things online. And in fact, um, our, our interview with the mayor will, um, will be online. Uh, so thank you again so much, Mayor. It's been such a, a, a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Thank Take you good care. Thank you.